reading uh, one, one of many books that I'm kind of reading through my Safari online account, doing math with Python, because uh, I think it's actually quite interesting and it's well written. So in chapter five here, we're doing, uh, there's a challenge problem at the end, estimating the area of a circle. So consider a dartboard with the circle of radius r inscribed in a square with a side 2r. <clears throat> Let's say you're throwing a lot of darts at it. Basically, they're saying that you can simulate throwing darts at this square, and if the dart lands within the area of the circle, the ratio of hits multiplied by the area of the square will give you an estimate of the area of a circle. And they basically say, you know, write a program. So given a radius to, you know, if you throw a thousand darts or 10,000 darts, you multiply the, uh, the percentage hit in this box times the uh, area of the <clears throat> area of the square, you'll get 12.56, 12 point, you know, you'll, you'll get better and better precision every time. I thought that was actually kind of interesting. So what I haven't written the code yet, but I did sketch it out in a notebook. Here's the way I thought about it. So forgive the fact that this is not a perfect circle, which is a good band, or a perfect square, which hasn't had their day in music yet. But the way I'm imagining it is, you know, let's say you have a radius of two. Look at it like it's an XY coordinate system. Let's say for the sake of argument that, um, you know, let's insert a shape. I want, uh, well, yeah, sure. Let's say I throw a dart, it ends up here. That's cool. Let's say I throw another dart. You know, that would be a hit, right? So that means we hit the circle. But what if, what if one ends up here? That did not hit the circle. What if one ends up, you know, here that did not hit the circle so how do we know whether or not basically like in Python the thing that we're gonna do it's like random random uniform whoops we're gonna want it between negative 2 and positive 2 so you know the outcomes right it could be anywhere from from here to here x and y right so x could be a maximum of two a minimum of two negative two <clears throat> likewise with x so you almost have to say like random x is going to be equal to that and also random y is going to be equal to that so let's just say we have those now how do we tell whether or not it hit or not so basically the way I looked at it is if you make a take a line, right? So we draw a line from the zero, you know, to here, right? Kind of you know what I'm saying. So what do we know about this? We know that x is like one point, you know, eight, and y is probably like one point eight. We know about we know that this forms a right triangle, right? This is going to be a 90 degree angle here. So what do we know about right triangles? We know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? So this is going to be like a a squared. That's not coming out right. This is going to be b squared. And that's going to be equal to the hypotenuse. I think that's what that's called. I'm 34 years old. I haven't been in school in a long time. C squared, you know, C squared. So we could basically say, and what is B here? B is essentially the value of X. A is essentially the value of Y. And uh, C squared is, is what we're solving for. And the key thing here is if the square, if, if C is greater than R, which is the radius, which is basically um, 2, which extends out anywhere. If C is uh, greater than R, then we missed. So how do we code that up? Um, well, let's write a function. Define dart throw simulator. We'll input a radius. 
and I'll spell it right just for the hell of it. So we have a radius. Um, so we take a random x, we have a random y. <clears throat> uh, I'll just call this hypot is going to be random a squared plus b squared so a squared plus b squared is going to be equal to c squared so the hypotenuse is going to be equal to um to that i think right so let me order of operations i don't know just make sure it's not doing anything strange here I'll just I'm just actually gonna call that c squared. So c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Let's just return c squared real quick. So let's say dart throw simulator two. So we have four point oh three. It should always be a different value depending on how we cut it. <clears throat> so I think we need to import math. Maybe I have it in num math. Import math. Let's just return math. Math dot square root. So that's a hit. That's going to be a, a hit. That's okay. So now runs. Now we need to do this some given time. So for uh, run in range runs, so we're gonna wanna do this some number of times. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna call that the outcome. And we're gonna say if outcome is uh, less than the radius, and you know what we need to do? We need to say, you know, hits equals zero. Then we could say increment hits by plus one. So basically we're saying this is kind of like outcome is whether or not that hypotenuse essentially breached, the length of the hypotenuse breached the radius at any given point, right? So what we're trying to do is say when that happens we want to count the number of hits so then I'm just going to return so return hits divided and we want the percentage of the time that we did hit relative to the percentage of the time that we threw so hits divided by runs right so let's see what happens here we get radius of two runs equal to 1000 <clears throat> Uh, runs make sure I save that yeah I don't want to return that makes more sense okay so 0. 0.778 now the last thing we need to do is let's call that the hit ratio um, the total area of the square is going to be equal to um, 2r squared, 2 times r radius, and that's going to be squared, whoops. So I'm going to return <clears throat> hit ratio times total square area, and if, the, if I'm right, I should get something like 12.5 or something like that. 12.6, 12.4. Let's run it 10,000 times. Yeah, 12 point, yeah, run 100,000 times. Let's keep running this thing like a mad person. 12.56, yeah, 12.56, 0128. Yeah, so that's it. So it's the, the key thing that took me a little while was um, establishing the boundaries for determining whether or not the return of the random uniform function was actually hitting in the circle or hitting outside of a circle. 
And as I looked at it and just started drawing lines in a notebook instead of staring at a Jupyter notebook, I realized that it really came down to the distance formula <clears throat> or the Pythagorean theorem in the end. So uh, yeah, hopefully, you know, if you're learning Python or just refreshing your math skills, that was helpful. And uh, we just used the math module and also I imported random above, but you would want to also import random there. So uh, yeah, hopefully that was helpful. And may, I think in the next video, we're going to think about how we can calculate pi through some kind of similar um, mechanical exercise or simulation. So see you then.